Śrīla Prabhupāda ki jai. Many saints of the past and uh, even uh, theologians and scholars have tried to define love of God, but they feel incompetent to define love. What to say of love of God, but even uh, love of man is also difficult to define. Why it is so? Because of various reasons. The first reason is love is very subjective. Even if it's in a divine realm of it, or, or if it is in a mortal realm on the earth between person to person, it's, it is very subjective experience and to put subjective experience into words have always been difficult and poets have tried to grapple this uh, fact but that's not always completely possible. Second thing is love of God is transcendental. Transcendental means love of God transcends the human comprehension, transcends the human uh, human thoughts and feelings as it is said by scholars and saints and that is why it is difficult to define love of God. What to say define it? Very difficult to put love of God even in simple words. And that's why many saints uh, like Madhvachare, Ramanujachare, they, they just alluded to love of God in their writings but they didn't speak much about it. They spoke much about liberation. When love of God came, they said, uh, so we can't explain it, we can't define it, we have to experience that love of God. But something happened 500 years ago and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's disciple Sri Rupa Goswami, he defined love of God and that was a big revolution. And that revolution, the legacy of that revolution is being carried on in a Gaudiya Vaishnav tradition and today I'm going to define love of God for you as Rupa Goswami did. So, what is love of God? Uh, we find in Chaitanya Charitamrita, a book written by Krishna Skaviraj Goswami in Adi Lila, 4th chapter, 165 verse. Uh, Krishna Skaviraj Goswami, he speaks in Chaitanya Charitamrita the words of uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he says, Atmendriya Preeti Vancha Tare Boli Kam Krishnendriya Preeti Cha Dhare Prem Nam Srila Prabhupada translates it as as the desire to gratify one's own senses is lust or calm and the desire to gratify or desire to please not gratify desire to please the senses of Lord Krishna is love it's a beautiful definition the desire to, to gratify to please oneself is lust and the desire to please the senses of Krishna is love of God. Now this is a, this is an ontological definition. Uh, it, it describes the existence of love of God. What is love of God in its very being? But this needs more explanation because, because, uh, because, because one might ask, okay, what do you mean by to please Lord Krishna's senses? What do you mean by that? How do you do that? What is uh, so to to further explain this fact? Uh, what do you mean by uh, by pleasing the senses of Krishna? We need to refer to another verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita, and that is and it's a beautiful verse. Krishna Skaviraj Goswami he quotes a verse from Rupa Goswami's book Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. This is 1.4.1. And Srila Prabhupada quotes it in the purport. Uh, and Prabhupada quotes, Samyak Marsnita Swantaha Mamatva Atishayankita Bhavaeva Bhavasaeva Sandranatma Buddhai Prema Nigadyate. This is love of God. This is a definition of love of God. Let alone defining, uh, so let alone talking about the subject of love of God, which is so difficult. Rupa Goswami defines love of God. And the definition of love of God has three things, three components to it. But before we enter the definition of love of God, uh, which actually helps us to explain uh, what do you mean by pleasing the senses of Krishna. Before doing that, let me just focus on the last part of the verse, Buddhai Prema Nikadyate. This is again the another revolution which Rupa Goswami brings up. He says, okay, let's define love of God. Prema nigadyate. Nigadyate means, uh, means def defining. But, let's define. But, buddhai. He adds this word. Love, buddhai means intelligence. 
now that's another evolution learned people intelligent people define love of god like this rupa goswami says like this like what 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 is defining in this verse so why rupa goswami says learned and intelligent people so do you need intelligence to talk about love well some people might count argue no love is just feeling you don't need intelligence rather we have to block intelligence but rupa goswami says no buddha he uses the word buddha for three reasons the first is love to talk about subject of the subject matter of love you need intelligence what kind of intelligence you need scriptural intelligence and that is madhalila 22nd chapter 65 verse another verse which krishna's kaviraj goswami quotes in chaitanya charitamrita is shastri uktai sunipun dhrid shraddha jar uttam adhikari sei tarae samsar it's a beautiful verse and shila prapa translates as that soon upon as expert in argument and logic devotees were expert in argument and logic they are topmost devotees and they these those topmost devotees they can understand and define love so uh, a foolish person cannot define love neither even he can even understand what is love let alone experiencing love that's not possible everything is through scriptures and the second why rupa goswami uses the word buddha because another meaning of buddha is awareness 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 a, a, a person who understands and experiences love he is aware that krishna is present everywhere learned people in in this path of devotion they are aware that krishna is linked with him them krishna has a bond with them that awareness is there 24 hours that's why rupa goswami uses his word buddha people who are aware that they have a relationship with god only they can understand and experience love of god and the third reason why rupa goswami uses the word buddha is because these devotees are expert in serving lord devotees who are expert in serving lord 24 hours only they can define love of god so having said that we come back to this the definition of love of god now this definition of love of god has three components and the three components are samyak marsnita swantah first second is mamatva atishayankita and the third is bhava sa eva santrana atma you can refer the book if you want or google it uh, now these three components of love of god they, they if you understand this then you will understand what do you mean by pleasing the senses of krishna one thing is to say theoretically love means to please the senses of krishna another thing is to really understand what do you mean by that and apply it in life so because sometimes it happens we we want to please the senses of krishna but but in the garb of pleasing the senses of krishna we are gratifying our own senses and that might be by that might be a little tricky and also difficult when you practice devotion but if you understand this verse this definition of love of god then it will be uh, easy much easier than before so what are the three components well the first component to please senses of krishna is means samyak masnita swantah samyak means completely masnita means soft swantah means heart when to please senses of krishna what does that mean when you have a desire to please senses of krishna then your heart becomes soft then your heart becomes soft now what do you mean by heart becoming soft well uh, we can't see the heart we can't touch heart we can't uh, we can't even uh, manipulate our heart we can't do that uh, i mean to say objectively what do you mean by heart becoming soft is it a poetic language no it is yeah it is sort of a poetic language but what it means is that uh, when you when you speak heart becoming soft in in devotional path we mean a desire to serve god the first component to please the senses of krishna has a desire to serve god that's the first component so if you say i want to please senses of krishna you should have this first component desire to serve him a devotee who desires to serve god his heart is soft a devotee who has no desire to serve god or less desire to serve god 
to that extent his heart is hard and that's what we see in this material world a mother wants to serve the child child wants to serve the mother and their bond is very gentle and very the hearts are soft for each other uh, and that's the first component the second component is mamatva ati shayankita the second component is mamatva means means uh, krishna you are mine and i am yours so mamatva means the second component is to establish a desire to establish a relationship with god if you say i want to please senses of krishna then you should have this in your heart a desire to have a relationship with god what kind of relationship he is a master and i am his servant this desire this feeling should be there in your heart he is my master i am his servant and that's that is mamatva but i think it's it's more than that it's not just he is a master and i'm a, i'm a servant it is more than that i belong to krishna and krishna belongs to me this kind of uh, sentiment which bhakti vinod thakur says ami to tomar tumi to amar this sentiment when it's there then your desire to please the senses of krishna that's genuine this second component third component is bhava eva santran atma that means uh, bhava means emotion santran atma means condensed uh, what kind of emotions D- uh, desi- uh, an emotion a feeling to meet him face to face so this is a third component uh, for uh, pleasing the senses of krishna if you want to please senses of krishna you should have this also in your heart a desire a, a eagerness to meet krishna face to face we want to meet krishna but we don't demand that you should come but we have this in our heart just like uh, sita ma when she was in lanka in ashok bhatika in the in the custody of of ram and she was kidnapped by him she was always desiring to meet lord ram she didn't really demand him but she had a desire to meet lord ram when hanuman came she expressed a desire but otherwise she was waiting for him so this is called as buddha prema nigatyate this is called love this is a beautiful definition in other words uh, what is love love means a desire to please senses of krishna what do you mean by desire to please senses of krishna the meaning is when your heart has three feelings three thoughts and the three thoughts is the desire to serve krishna desire to have relationship with him and the desire to meet him if these three things are there if these three components are there in your heart these three desire are there in your heart then you can say genuinely i am pleasing the senses of krishna now you might ask well um, well uh, we don't have all these things we have desire to serve in a very uh, small proportion desire to meet krishna uh, we don't have that we have relationship with him we have some theoretical understanding of it so um uh are we are we uh, uh so can we say that do we have love of god no we cannot say this three component should be there 100% 100% then you can say you have love of god what you can say is we are on the path to attain love of god that we can say and that is called as sadhana bhakti that is called as practice devotion practice devotion is on the path to attain love of god why i am telling this is because because we are we, we are practicing krishna consciousness we are desiring to please senses of krishna but our desire is not complete because we don't have these three components the more complete our desire to please krishna senses of krishna the more we are near love of god and the idea is the practice shravanam and kirtanam chanting holy names and hearing about krishna all this preaching all this process of krishna consciousness is to mature and condense your desire to please krishna and to actually develop these three com- three components of this desire to please krishna in your heart and then your life is perfect hari krishna